Well, after um, shooting Drawing Restraint 9, which um, was more of a purely a cinematic uh, project, um, and I, quite honestly, it was at the point where I was, um, I felt like I was at the end of that experiment. Um, and I wanted to find a way of um, capturing the feeling that I have had had, had on, on set with, um, with some of the filmmaking, you know, where a scene would be made uh, in real time um, and the group of filmmakers present and the, the cast and crew, I think were part of a, a ritual that, that never really made its way onto the screen. In other words, I was much more interested in the, the process of making those films than, than with the films themselves in a certain way. And um, even, if, even if the subject matter of those films was often about process, I think it still wasn't enough for me. And so I set out to make this, this piece which would use live performance as, as its core. And I, um, I have been filming these performances quite extensively. Um, although when I started, I didn't know if what I was making would eventually be a film. I now know that it will be. But um, in principle, it was about um, trying to create a, a, a ritual, create a situation that could be witnessed by a few people and um, and uh, and for there to be a collective experience among those people with the the uh, with the narrative and with the objects and, and, and with the the time that we spent together. And one thing, when you started these uh, uh, these uh, you know these uh, the adaptation of the book of Norman, uh, you had already the idea of all chapters, or it comes one after the other, you know. When you do the, the first and the second and third, you know already what you want to do in the fourth, fifth, the sixth, and seventh, or it just came one after the other. Do you have a, you know, a, a, a total vision what you want to do until the end, or, or something that is what you say, a work in progress all the time? Mm -hmm. It's something like the way Cremaster was developed, it's very similar in that there's a, there's a core narrative. In this case, it's about the, the material um, processes um, as we move from one car to the next and the, the recycling that happens, essentially, um, and the transformation of that material, the metal and the plastic. So, yeah, let's say that there's a kind of a sculptural narrative that's in, in place, that's written. Um, as far as how um, the more character-driven scenes will use the text um, and some of the characters from the book or not, that, um, that's written in advance of the performance, together with my collaborator, who's um, uh, Jonathan Bepler, who's a composer who did all of the Cremaster music. We're collaborating on the, the uh, operatic aspect of this. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to ask you, uh, I have a feeling, watching your, your work, your videos, that there's always a sense of purpose in all, in all the pro process, uh, a purpose of, of doing something that all the witnesses are waiting for, and we see all these characters uh, building something uh, around something that somehow must be done. Uh, we see these with animals witnessing, with all these people doing a labor that something is waiting to, to be done. So I would like to ask you to, to talk a little bit about it to, to develop on that idea. Well, I think, uh, I mean, in the context of a film festival, I, I mean, it makes me think of my connection to cinema, which I would say started with horror and with uh, um, 
the, the type of horror that uses architecture as a principal character, like the Cabin in the Woods films, uh, or the, um, the way that the boat functions in Jaws, or something like that, that, that there's a, you know, that the, the emotion is carried, you know, both by the, the actors in the story, but also by the, the architecture. I think it's something that always interested me and fascinated me with, with uh, horror from the 70s, especially. And um, so I think my, you know, my primary practice is as a sculptor. I'm an object maker. That's what I am. And uh, at the same time, I'm very interested in telling stories and, and in that way making narrative objects. So for whatever reason, I can't really make an object without having a story first. So the films are really, um, or the performances are really a way of, of giving me a text or a, a story that I can work from. And um, so I think all of the, the work or the doing in the, those stories is, um, is, is related to my habit as an object maker, really, and, um, and my interest in, in, in that behavior and, and how those, um, um, you know, the behavior of, uh, of making or uh, even the behavior of objects can, can um, carry a drama or can carry uh, um, an emotion. Thank you. Good evening. I would like to, to ask you, uh, you are very persistent on the um, creation of rituals and very incisive on uh, all the details that uh, all of the procedures. What is your opinion in uh, this age of uh, everything is ready-made or very quickly, my microwave food, no longer the ritual of cooking. How do you feel about um, the necessity of the ritual towards, well, comparing to the real life? I think that yeah, rituals have have um, have been lost uh, in um, well, they've been replaced by new rituals. But the, let's say the rituals I'm interested in have largely been lost. And uh, I feel like um, it's it's similar to uh, the you know the way in which. Um, Visual art has become very mediated in general. Um, that there's something slightly antiquated about placing an object in a room and asking somebody to deal with that um, and to take the time to walk around that object. Um, and I feel like that, uh, which I think is what you're saying, that that um, that ritual is becoming more and more um, rarefied. And, um, um, but I, I think for that reason, I feel um, more than I ever have felt like I have a job. You know, I understand what my role is as, as an artist to, to create these things. Are you an agent of your own self-destruction? I think is what I'm asking. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not... Um, you know, I, I, I can't make a sculpture like Richard Serra can. You know, I can't make an object that, that refers to nothing but itself. I'm not capable of doing it. Um, I make narrative sculpture. And um, so, as you're saying, it's, by definition, it's a mediated work. Um, I guess what my interest, did, interest is, 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 is to make it less mediated. Um, um, as less as possible, yeah. Within my range of of uh, of, uh, of, of you know what, what I'm capable of doing, the moving image um, precedes the the object. I think it becomes confusing. I mean, I think that. This stuff is going to be around for a long time, and I think that over time it sorts itself out. I believe um, that sculpture is sculpture, and um, 
and the, the text will become more separate from the sculpture. But I think the way that, um, that films are consumed, no matter how um, alternative the film is, it still has, um, it has a different way of exploiting itself th than an object does. And I think that those two things, that there's a disparity between those two things in, in my work, I think, in terms of how um, the, the, the relationship between those th two things is understood. Um, in other words, that the object is, an, is ancillary to the, to, the, to the movie, you know, which is not, it's, it doesn't really work that way. It, it work, for me, it works more like um, historical painting is, is connected to a, a story. And uh, you may or may not understand that narrative, but it, it still functions as a painting, you know? And I think, um, you know, I try to be quite conscious of the way objects are abstracted out of the story um, to not be burdened completely by the story, but to have space to function as sculpture themselves, which is tricky. I think it's a very tricky balance. Sometimes, it works, sometimes it doesn't work. I'd like to ask you um, what part does drawing uh, uh, takes part in your process? Uh, is it a preliminary? Um, sometimes it seems to have a, a kind of sculpture-like component to it. Um, so it seems kind of hybrid. Um, so, what is your relation to drawing? To drawing, it's um, drawing is is the beginning and the end, basically. That there's drawing, there's one type of drawing for me, which is more um, exploratory or about um, writing. Really, it's about, um, I suppose, in film terms, it's it's storyboarding um, um, or part of the process of of laying out the narrative structure. So there's a lot of drawing that happens in that phase. And then there's another uh, possibility uh, at the very end after the narrative has been distilled down to object and the object can be distilled down to a drawing. So it's sort of the last thing that I would do is to draw, which um, probably gives me the most pleasure because it's the most distilled, I would say. Um, <laughs> your, uh, I think it's uh, in the beginning of your presentation, you presented, uh, you call them storyboards, and they seem like objects. Mm. Uh, you like, you act directly on the book. Mm -hmm. um, so that part is, uh, is the beginning? Is there, is there when, when you're planning? Um, well, those those first images of the books, those I mean, those were drawings that were made later. Um, it was just a way of uh, talking a little bit about the, the the book as a starting point tonight. Yeah. You use the technological and the historical and the mythical um, to apply your subjectivity and then create your own objects. Uh, even if your work is mediated, um, how do you feel about other people using the objects you create? and using them for a subjective purpose and for their own creations? I, um, I don't know if I've seen that much, but um, I would be up for that. Yeah. <laughs> if it were possible, you know. I think, uh, I mean, the objects are usually unique. They're, they're not um, additioned, usually. Hello, I was wondering, um, it, what the special reason, uh, if there are special reasons behind choosing cars in, in the um, work that you were just talking about? Like. Um, well, I, I spoke a little bit about the, that the, the Cree Master 3 was a, a logical starting point for me. Um, in fact, before um, Norman Mailer passed away. I, I was able to talk to him about this project, and um, he, after seeing Cremaster Three, had recommended that I read this book. Um, 
and I think he, he felt that way because I think that, the, the, that there's, there are some similarities um, um, in terms of the way the, the protagonist moves from one state to the next and how those states are expressed as rooms in, in terms of Cree Master Three, in terms of the rooms of the Chrysler building. But um, I, I think um, the exploration that I went through in making that piece you know, had a lot to do with learning about the, the origins of Freemasonry and, and how uh, that relates to Egyptian mythology. So when he suggested ancient evenings to me, I, I felt in a certain way like I had already made, I'd already made my adaptation of that book. So it, it, was, uh, it was a strange thing to take on, you know, to feel like I, you know, I'm gonna spend the next six years working on something that I've already done. I felt that way a little bit. Um, but the the car from Cream Master Three, I think, was a was a, a way for me to get my head around the like the overabundance of people in that in that text. I mean, there are so many people in the ancient evening story um, that the protagonist is recollecting and um, talking about his relationship to, to all these people. I, I think that my initial reaction was to bring an object into the center of the story so I could get my head around it because it was too much um, for me to deal with. <laughs>